Hey guys, this is gonna be another round of new Blender geometry generators and procedural generators that you probably missed. From creating stylized trees, ocean waves, to realistic eyes, hair, and more. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Scattering stuff in Blender can be a performance nightmare if you are not careful. You can throw in some grass, rocks, or debris, and before you know it, your viewport starts lagging as if you are running your project on a potato computer. The problem isn't just the number of polygons, but the sheer number of separate objects Blender has to process. That's why we're gonna talk about dual level scatter, which works around this by grouping instances into large mesh blocks before scattering them, which drastically cuts down the number of processes your machine has to calculate. So instead of handling thousands of tiny individual objects, Blender processes fewer, larger ones, and the result, a performance boost while keeping the scene dense and detailed. It also comes with camera calling, so Blender only bothers rendering what's actually in view, which means in simple terms, no more wasting resources on stuff that you will never see. On top of that, there is a procedural wind animation that gives scattered objects a bit of movement. And if you're working on dense outdoor environments, these setups make things easier while keeping everything running smoothly. In the same vein, if you're creating outdoor environments, you probably need trees. And in this case, you have 3DT stylized cherry, which will help you, especially with stylized trees. Because as you know, manually modeling them takes forever. And the usual procedural tree generators don't always give you the control that you want. This cherry tree generator makes the process, however, way more easier by letting you tweak things like branch gravity, trunk band, and blossom density. So whether you need a tiny sapling or a massive narrow tree, you can do that and everything is adjustable. In addition, the bark shader adds even more control, letting you tweak edge wear, moss coverage, and surface roughness so the trees don't end up looking too clean and artificial. The shader actually adapts to the shape of the tree, so you don't have to deal with weird texture stretching. And being a fan of the fall season, my favorite feature is the falling petal animation, which gives you control of how fast they fall, how many there are, and how random their movement is. It works for anything from a gentle spring breeze to a drastic anime style petal storm. So if you're looking for a stylized environment that includes stylized trees, this is probably the tool that is gonna help you do so. And if you wanna generate oceans procedurally, you have a setup simply called Ocean. Blender's default option for creating water I kind of a mixed bag. The Ocean modifier is fine for basic wave patterns, but is not super flexible. On the other hand, full-on fluid simulations take forever to bake, and aren't always necessary if all you need is some moving water. So this geometry node-based ocean setup strikes a nice balance between these two problems. And you can get full control over wave height, speed, and direction. You can even create anything from a calm lake to choppy open water. And there's also a baked foam simulation, which helps break up the surface and make the waves look more natural and realistic. And to keep things running smoothly, it has camera calling. So only the part of the ocean that is actually visible gets processed, which helps a lot with performance. There are also settings for phytoplankton density and water color, so you can tweak how murky or clear the water looks depending on your scene. On a side note, this is not meant for stuff like objects interacting with water, but for large animated water surfaces, and in this case, it works really well. Now, if you're working on something winter-related, you're probably gonna need some ice. And making real ice in Blender is trickier than it sounds. You can just slap a glass shader with a transparent one on a cube and call it a day. But ice has refraction, dispersion, surface scattering, and a ton of tiny imperfections that make it look believable. And this generator called Real Ice can help you do that. It generates procedural cracks, bubbles, and surface roughness. So the ice doesn't end up looking too perfect. And inside, you have sliders for edge wear, frost buildup, and surface irregularities. So you can tweak everything without needing to sculpt or paint extra details. And since it is fully procedural, you can make adjustments at any point without needing to redo anything. 
And generally speaking, I think it is great for product renders, winter environments, or anything that needs ice and needs to be looking photorealistic. And now, if you need some quick hair for your characters, Blender Ready Hair System is probably going to help you do that. So this new Geometry Nodes based hair system has some nice features, because setting things up from scratch can take way too much time. So this pre-configured hair system makes the whole process simpler by giving you ready to use settings that you can tweak without needing to mess around with a bunch of nodes. You have controls for clumping, curl intensity, strength thickness, and length variation all in the modifier panel. And there are also randomization options which help keep the hair from looking too uniform. The roots stay properly attached to the mesh, so you don't have to deal with the weird floating hair problems. And it works best for background characters or secondary models, or you need good looking hair but don't want to spend hours grooming every single strand. It also includes beard settings, so it's not just limited to hairstyles. Now we're gonna talk about something different with Stylized Cloud Generator, which can make things easier by mixing procedural noise with hand painted textures, so you can get clouds that actually look organic. The tool comes with a full asset library of 89 pre-made cloud models so you can drop them into your scene without starting from scratch. There is also a custom shader that lets you tweak color gradients, softness and shape so you are not locked into one style. It also has a system for placing clouds along curves, which is perfect for things like smoke trails or layered skies. In addition, the Sky World shader, which comes with this tool, adds sun positioning and atmospheric haze, making it easy to set up dynamic skies. On a side note, while it is designed for EV, it also works in cycles, though you need to tweak some settings. And for projects that need some sharp and crystal shapes, the Crystals Formation modifier is going to be a great choice. This is the case because it combines geometry nodes with math functions and noise generators to create a wide variety of crystal formations. The modifier is flexible, in addition to being easy to use, which offers a bunch of options like density, size, thickness, and edge sharpness. You can also randomize shapes for a more natural look, and you can add rotation and even apply volumetric effects for subsurface scattering. And it works on meshes, curves, and even lets you draw with a curve. In general, there are 8 preset crystal models that you can get started with, in addition to 10 crystal materials like quartz and amethyst. And from what I can see, everything is ready to go from the asset browser. You can append objects and collections from the downloaded zip file. And generally, this is a simple way to add detailed and customizable crystals without the hassle of setting everything up from scratch. Last but not least, we have something really important, which is garments. As you know, adding details like stitches, helms and seams can be a real pain sometimes, but this tool makes it super easy by generating them procedurally using UV mapping. But how does it do that? Well, it stays stable during class simulation, so you can focus on the shape and movement first. Then you can add the finer details like buttons and puckering later using vertex groups. The Cloth Sewing Toolbox gives you a bunch of options for adding realistic sewing details like stitches, hems, buttons, and patches. Kind of like Marvelous Designer or Cloth 3D. And it works with simple meshes for animation, so you can add all that extra detail afterward without messing with your simulation. And thanks to UV Space Computing, the tool generates the geometry and shading in a stable space before bringing it back to the mesh so you can add all the little touches without slowing things down. And you can even bind things like buttons and patches to the mesh automatically, so there will be no need to worry about the deformation, which is a great thing. Let's finish this with Treated, a tree generator that keeps things simple while still allowing for a good amount of customization. If you have ever struggled with setting up complex node systems for trees, this add-on takes a different approach. So instead of adjusting endless sliders, you can shape the tree directly using visual controls. Once a tree is added from a panel, you can tweak branch length, thickness, and rotation just by moving or scaling different parts. The procedural system takes care of most of the adjustments for you. 
the branches and trunk react naturally to transformations, like scaling affects thickness, rotation increases bending, and movement adjusts density. This makes it much easier to create variations without getting lost in node setups or constantly fine-tuning parameters. For texturing, Treat includes auto UV unwrapping and comes with a selection of 4 bark textures and 5 leaf textures, and everything is editable in the geometry nodes menu. If you need to refine the shape, sections of the tree can be hidden, and there is also a seat option for randomization. One thing to note is that the rig won't be duplicated if you duplicate the tree, but the first one will serve for both trees, so it is better to add new trees from the panel instead of copying them. And there you have it guys. If you are interested in these Blender Geometry node generators and procedural generators, you will find all the necessary links in the description. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.